Hello everyone, my name is Russ Grease and today I'm going to be telling you some stuff about Stan Myers and um, it is very important information um, that I have found out from some of his older patents that I have personally never seen before. Uh, a couple days ago I found these while looking up the gas core transformer. Um, the patents I'm going to be talking about uh, are patent number CA, it's a Canadian patent, 1, 2, 1, 3, 6, 7, 1. Make sure I got that right. I may have said it wrong. The other patent I'm talking about is patent number 4. It's U.S. patent. 4, 6, 1, 3, 3, 0, 4. Right there. Now the information I'm going to tell you is so important I cannot stress enough. So what I need you to do right now is go down to the description of this video. And I've posted a link to an actual downloadable video link um, posted on a server that you guys need to download and re-upload on your channel. Do that right now before you even watch this video because I'm afraid this video is going to be gone. Um, my information, my YouTube channel, in case you're watching this video on someone else's channel, is RWG42985. That's my YouTube. Uh, my email is RWG42985 at AOL.com. Try to contact me if you'd like. Uh, if I don't get back with you right away, I do apologize. Um, but you have full rights to post this video anywhere you'd like and to um, chop this video up if you need to to fit it on your channel um, and post it on all the servers you can and if you're in any groups at all e mass email this information to people uh, I'm not kidding this is seriously important information and I'm gonna go through it right now I'm gonna go through these patents uh, a guy by the name of Craig Westbrook um, actually went up and saw Stan's water car and um, him and a group of people and he states some information that he has personally seen that comes out of these patents as well that totally is going to blow you guys' minds. So I, I, I cannot stress enough this is so important for you guys to pass this information along and do it right now. Alright, All right, let's get started. So the first patent I'm going to talk about um, is the Canadian patent. Again there's the number. Um, the patent is called Electrical Particle Generator, all right, and it's basically an accelerator, a particle accelerator. And uh, Alex Petty posted this on his blog, I told you guys about this, um, and the patent I will be posting in the description, I'll put the patents in there, I believe, not 100% sure, but I believe that the, some of the notes that are handwritten on there, like this page here, are, I believe, Alex Petty's notes. I could be wrong, do not quote me on that. But this second patent is the most important piece of this puzzle, but you have to read the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And basically, I'm going to just read some of the highlighted stuff, and you can go through there uh, and, and do this research for yourself. Um, excuse me reading this stuff. I'm not the best. I'm a builder, not a reader. Abstract. This is what it's supposed to do. An electrical particle generator can comprising of a non-magnetic pipe and a closed loop having a subsequential amount of magnetized particles encapsulated there within. A mag magnetic accelerator assembly positioned on a said pipe having an in inductive primary winding and low voltage input to said winding. So it's a low voltage input. A secondary winding positioned on a said pipe opposing the said primary winding. So it's on the opposite side of the primary, the secondary is like a loop. Upon voltage being applied to the said primary winding, the magnetized particles are passed through a said magnetic accelerator assembly with increased velocity. So it's literally a particle accelerator. And it's just using standard coils. Now the particles, that's what's interesting. That's what I need to figure out. I've got most of it marked here. I'll keep going. The velocity accelerated particles continue through the said pipe and induce an electrical voltage slash current potential as they pass through the secondary winding. The increased secondary voltage is utilized in an amplifier arrangement. All right. So basically you've got standard coil that has a core in the middle of it and you can magnetize that core and a transformer has two of them on there. Let me just get one. All right, here's a standard transformer. Okay, in the gas core transformer, this iron core, which is looped like this, is going to be a non-magnetic pipe. Now, what I found out is that it's in the newer patent is that 
the magnetic pipe is supposed to be uh, non-magnetic and not copper or aluminum. It has to be some sort of a plastic, I would think. Um, now I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to be real interesting later with some pictures of Stan Meyer's estate as well. And we'll get to that. But basically, this would be a pipe, and there'd be magnetic particles going through here, and you are basically super uh, energizing those particles and speeding up velocity. So when they go through the secondary, usually magnetic flux is in this core, but in this application, the magnetic flux is in the particles. So it's actually going around the core, and it is the flux carrier of this particular device. So even though it's a non-magnetic core, by magnetizing the particles within here, you are actually inducing voltage into your secondary. And that is super important. I honestly think that that is one of the key components to Stan Meyer's work. Nobody knew it. Nobody understands it. So I'm going to explain it to you. All right, let's keep going. Um, it says a non-magnetic pipe having a closed, uh, closed loop having a subsequential or some stainal can't read, sorry. Amount of magnetized particles encapsulated there within. Okay. So you got a pipe with particles in it moving around. The primary voltage inductive winding with a low voltage input. The secondary winding comprised of a greater number of turns than the primary. So it's a step up transformer in this patent. The primary inductive winding and core are positioned around the first position on an endless closed loop non-magnetic pipe. Now in this patent it keeps saying non-magnetic but in the later patent it actually tells you it cannot be a conductive material either. Um, and that is, that's interesting because I'm going to show you some pictures that are kind of weird. And they look like copper so I'll show you. The secondary windings uh, alright it says here the secondary windings are positioned around an opposite position of the sad endless pipe. So basically, just like this, except you have a non-magnetic pipe in, in between these cores, or the coils, I should say. Uh, it says the magnetic elements are particles and preferably gas. Now it also talks about solids and um, liquids, but preferably gas, it says here. As the particles approach the accelerator assembly, the primary co coil in the field therein attracts the particles and accelerates the particles to enter the gap of the coil. As the magnetic elements proceed, the repulsion end of the accelerator will in part further magnetically magnetic force uh, will in part further magnetic force to the particles. So basically the particles are being sucked in here and they're being drawn in and shoved out and their the velocity speeds up now that's another interesting thing hydroxy or you know hydrogen hydrogen and oxygen gases can be in many different states uh, solid liquid uh, plasma so it's possible that this is a plasma core transformer um, real quick I'm gonna show you the drawings so you guys can see what I'm talking about because it's kinda confusing Basically, that's what it looks like. Um, all right, the primary and the secondary. Okay, and the particles are accelerating. They're being sucked in here and pushed out here. And then being induced, the current's being induced in this coil here. All right, so that's how, that's what that, that's what it looks like. That's just a standard drawing. I'm going to show you some other drawings that are very interesting. It's in the patent. Uh, if you want, go download the patent now. Uh, it's in a link in the description, or you can look at it, uh, find it online, and uh, read this stuff with me. Uh, all right, let's see. So it says the the magnetic elements pass through the core of the secondary winding. There is induced a voltage therein. In this way, a much greater voltage is induced in the secondary winding of the transformer. Now. Um, the key word there is voltage. It doesn't say anything about amperage. But let's keep going. It is it is principal objective. Oh, it is.
principal objective of the present invention to provide an electrical generator capable of producing a voltage slash current much greater in magnitude there into four possible or here into four possible okay that statement right there bottom yellow one pause the video and read that basically it's saying that you're going to be able to get a greater voltage and current in uh, in magnitude basically be, uh, what I never thought before possible okay that right there is hinting towards something that will sustain itself while it's running let's keep going uh, may let's see uh, it just talks about uh, you can use direct current alternating current pulsed or other configuration of waveforms so it's a universal transformer which is genius uh, that means you can build one and you can put anything into it you'd like and the output would be close uh, let's see uh, again it just says closed loop magnetic pipe it does not say what kind of pipe copper aluminum you know plastic it doesn't say uh, it also says the magnetic accelerator assembly comprises primary windings a magnetic core and voltage taps so it's almost like the primary winding is wrapped on some sort of a magnetic core is kind of what it's saying there all right here it talks about the elements uh, within the, the gas core transformer and it says uh, the elements must be significantly light to be freely mobile therefore the elements may be particles suspended in a fluid medium such as liquid gas or lightweight movable solid particles and more preferably gas so obviously he's tried all and gas works the best but they all do function the magnetized elements are discrete all right the magnetized elements are discrete elements that is each particle or minuscule part therefore is separately magnetized all right uh, which basically means the particles are individually magnetized. That's what I'm getting out of that. Uh, each particle, upon uh, each particle, and not upon the mass. So that means not the whole mass going through it, but each individual particles being um, magnetized. All right. Uh, the voltage applied to terminal 16 of the primary winding is low voltage. And then later it says the output of the secondary transformer is a high voltage slash current output so you're putting in low voltage and getting high voltage high current out again that that applies to something that will sustain itself which is what I'm getting to um, yeah serious deep information here uh, hang in there with me get to the good stuff uh, increasing the number of coils with a given size winding the voltage current output is increased a large diameter pipe can be used with a substantial substantial number of turns of heavy gauge high current wire so basically you could get some serious amps out of this thing uh, let's see with particular reference to figure five there is illustrated a coil arrangement that utilizes the entire magnetic flux in a closed loop tubing all right I'm gonna show you what figure five looks like this is gonna blow your mind if you've never seen these patents this is gonna blow your mind this is figure five all right now check this out I'm gonna show you something all right uh, so this is Stan Myers estate video these are online you can go look them up Stan Myers estate uh, now here's what's interesting all right that and that nobody's seen these before nobody's heard of these before if you have it's awesome but most people have not these are not in standards standard documents out there with Stan's work uh, let me play the video here this is a pump okay a pump that's pumping the gases through here the first version had a pump which pumped the gases through the core instead of using a magnetic field to push push it through the core all right, let's keep going. Systems, different styles. All right, this is another one. And it looks like it has some sort of a heat dissipation, dis dissipation um, 
in here either there is a coil in here that's the accelerator or there is um, so much heat going through this as in a plasma gas think about it that it's got to be cooled because it gets too hot right, let's keep going okay here's another one I have not spent a whole lot of time looking at this one um, but you can see the same thing this is a coil of pipes okay look here's another picture of another patent this is figure six now come on guys look what what that is that alright so he's he is you know this is not just a an invention that hasn't been built no this thing works alright let's keep going okay guys I pause the video again on this uh, back to what I was saying with particular reference to figure five there is illustration of a coil arrangement that utilizes the entire magnetic flux in the closed loop system. That means there's magnetic particles accelerating in this closed loop right here and there's a coil. You can see the coil wrapped around this. These actually look like individual coils. I cannot tell, but those look like individual coils. And in his later patent you actually see individual coils just like this hooked up in series or parallel depending on what kind of output voltage you want okay so this is this is some heavy duty stuff right here this is the most important patent and information of whole the whole work of Stan Myers in my opinion uh, from now up to my research right now that's that's what I'm saying alright guys let's keep going because I got some serious information to tell you guys um, alright just like I was saying alright so just as I showed you in that uh, video what that looks like there's a another one here it says in figure 9 illustrated mechanical particle accelerator which is what that red let me just show you uh, it's what that red that that is that's a pump that's an electrical like air pump all right and picture they are talking about the illustration looks like this there's your pump all right and boom, they're just, he's just pumping particles through there, magnetized particles, and picking up voltage on the output. All right, it says, um, the mag magnetic particles are permanently magnetized prior to being encapsulated in the non-magnetic pipe. So basically, it's a closed pipe. The particles are magnetic, magnetically, uh, permanently magnetized put in this pipe and continuously ran through this so it can be a closed loop system you don't have to constantly put things into it if you're not going to burn the gas you can make this a closed loop system alright this is just some amazing information alright um, let's see now here's here's where I'm trying to figure out what's going on it says in figure 10 uh, which is this one. This is an early, an early staged, basically, um, what looks to be like a hydrolysis chamber. Okay. Or an electrolysis chamber. Alright. Here's what it says about that. There an illustrated apparatus. There is an illustrated apparatus, which doesn't really mean it's his apparatus. It just means it's the one that's in the book carrying out the purpose of vaporizing material into vaporized particles and thereafter magnetizing the particles by subjecting them to a magnetic field. So uh, it looks like Alex or somebody I believe has something here that says permanent magnets right here. So as the gases, whatever gases these are, I don't truly think these are just hydrogen and oxygen. I believe this is some sort of a, um, um, well it says later it's like a plasma arc in between these two electrodes. And it's actually like a, a fog or a steam and hydrogen and oxygen all mixed together. That's what I believe that this is showing. Because it's not a, an, it's not a standard fuel cell where you've just got electrolysis going on. No, there's an actual, like electrical gap that must be jumped all right so I'm assuming that it's more than just electrolysis that's the key 
All right, it's got it's got to be because there's so much more information here that that may answer. All right, uh, and also he's got written in here uh, oxygen, hydrogen gas pass through 5,000 G field question mark, which would be a magnetic field. Okay. All right, let's keep going. All right, here again. These are the parts I need your your help with. Uh, this is very important, and I need your help with this. It says, upon the appli application of powering, oh, I'm sorry, upon the application of power to the magnetizable material, electrodes 160 and 162, uh, let me show you what that is again, all right, 160 and 162, you see that, those the electrodes inside that chamber. Um, it says, the tip of the electrodes in the spark gap will vaporize into particles. Okay, now here's what's interesting. And I just thought of this right now. Discovering things before. This does not have water in it. Um, or it does not look like it has water in it. This is literally plasma... And what is plasma? An iodized gas? So this is iodized gas, possibly. This is where I need your help, because, because this is the part that I'm missing. This is, this is it. Okay, I just figured that out. As the particles progress in movement, they pass between the magnetic field generator, 175, which is that. Now that could be a coil or permanent magnets. We don't, we don't really know what that is. Okay. Uh, further down, it says a low voltage was applied to the particle accelerator. Upon accelerating, a high voltage, high current would be induced in the secondary pickup coil. Okay, so it states right there, a low voltage was applies, applied to the particle accelerator, which would be the primary. And upon acceleration, a high voltage current would be induced in the secondary pickup coil. Um, which, I mean, would mean a step-up transformer, uh, and it does say voltage slash current, not just voltage. And then uh, here a little bit later it says, uh, the most significant advantage of the present invention is that the voltage amplification is irrespective to the wave shape of input voltage. Now, the statement... Uh, is interesting as in that it says it's a voltage amplification. Okay, and it just states that the wave shape is the same, but the amplage voltification, okay, uh, the keywords that I'm picking out there. All right, although certain embodiments have been shown, it is to be understood modifications may be had without departing from the spirit and scope of the invention. Um, I believe that's. No, it's not the last statement before the claims. But basically what that means is that it could be improved. This isn't this isn't the final decision. This is just the beginning of what he's building. I always keep going. Um, okay, a little bit later it says in the claims, um, it says to provide a low input voltage and said secondary winding having the means for tapping a high voltage slash current for utilization. So you're inputting a low voltage again there, it says, and a high current output. Okay. Uh, later, it just says you could use gas, liquid, or solid uh, as, as the particle accelerator. So, again, you can have multiple forms of this type of gas. Um, Alright, particle accelerator further... Okay, a little bit later here it says, and wherein said magnetized elements are permanently magnetized elements. Um, and basically, in some of the diagrams here, it shows the particle accelerator, which would be inducing magnetic flux into the particles, and then they're dark colored, and then once you get to the secondary, they turn white, which means they lost some of their flux. It was induced into this coil. Alright, that's what I'm gathering from this. But if you looked at if you look at the pump, all the same colored particles all the way around because they're not using a primary coil to super energize that gas. Okay. So you gotta remember that. 
uh, when it says uh, permanently magnetized elements. That depends on what you're doing, I assume. Um, magnetizable. Ma okay, now here it talks about the type of magnetizable material, um, which is the last picture on this patent. Okay, which does not look like an electrolysis chamber. It looks like a plasma arc chamber. All right, and it says an assembly for providing a magnetized particle for utilization and an electrical particle generator comprising a chamber and a pair of, of magnetize uh, excuse me a pair of magnetizable material electrodes positioned therein a source of voltage slash current of opposing polarity applied to said electrodes said mag magnetizable material becoming vaporized upon the application of said voltage current and the said electrodes so I just figured this out right now it's great basically they're using so he's using something that it's a metal and when you cause a plasma arc across it what happens you eat at that metal and it turns into a vapor that's the vapor he's putting into this alright and that's important information uh, that's it I'll show you this diagram real quick it's interesting this is the input and the output and basically he's got a little coil here with a little input sine wave and a big coil here with a big sine wave output so it's a step up transformer okay alright um, look at this patent for yourself and read through it please and now let's go into this very and very very important patent that I've never seen before and have have not heard anybody discuss before okay now this is what's going to be interesting. Um, this is just unbelievable. All right. Just real quick, I'm going to show you something that's just going to blow your mind. In this patent, uh, patent number 4613304, U.S. patent number, it states, uh, th this is under the objectives on page it doesn't say it's column one it says it is a principal objective of the present invention to provide a hydrogen gas electrical generator capable of producing a voltage slash current much greater in magnitude here into four possible self sustaining all right that's what it's saying. Here's what it looks like. Um, this is basically what this is. Um, it's actually probably more like... Oh, no, it is that one. See the pump? Uh, here is the pump in this system. Right here. All right. And then in the next picture, the next diagram, here, this is a primary coil and secondary pickup coils. This is the particle accelerator instead of a pump. Alright. So here and here could be the primary coils. This right here. Now if you look it's got multiple coils. Can you see that? And to get AC out with a uh, I'm not sure what the input is here. We'll figure that out. With an AC signal, with the, I'm sorry, with the windings in series and going back and forth, which is what I believe each one of these is. Each one of these is a coil. Uh, I cannot confirm that because I cannot tell. Maybe someone else can that has seen this, like Craig. Here it shows DC output, and these windings are in parallel. Okay? So it depends on what you want. But this pipe right here, this 50 is that coil is this coil inside there and these little coils are outside here each one of these is a coil that way you can put them on there instead of trying to wrap the whole thing so you're utilizing a hundred percent of the gas flow as an output so this is your input look at the coil size this is your input is what it looks like I, I, I cannot tell it looks like this would be your input look at your output talk about amplification look at that now now I'm ready to show you. I gotta tell you one more thing. Then I'm ready to show you something that's gonna blow your freaking mind. 
Alright, uh, let me look it up. Hold on. Alright, uh, real quick, I'm going to show you where that says here. It says objective. I'll let you read it. You have to pause the video. Alright, then later, it says right here. <laughs> okay. You ready for this? This is... This is some serious stuff right here. This is just amazing. Alright, right here it says... Can you see that? In a self-sustaining embodiment of the gas electrical generator, a portion of the output at the voltage taps 70 and 72, which in this diagram are right here. That's the output of that coil wrapped around that core. All right, it says, of the pickup coils is directed back to the power supply, 16, which is here. This is supplying the energy to the cell, which is making the gas, which is running this output coil. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? In that, the total power we requ requested to be applied to the plates is relatively low and insignificant portion of the output at tap 70 and 72 is required for sustained operation of the generator. Yeah. Self-sustaining generator. Electrical generator and producing hydrogen and oxygen to burn at the same time. So important people. Now I've got something that's going to back this up and it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> you ready? Okay guys, here I have a video that is on Craig uh, Westbrook's YouTube channel. I'll put that in the, the description. Here's what the video shows. It's only a 57 minute or 57 second clip. These are on YouTube, by the way. There's there's a particle accelerator. Can you guys see it? Right there on the bottom? Right there. And there's three more. Look at that. There they are. Now you can see the coils a little better on that one. That one down there, I haven't, it's not even in that other video. Alright, I'm going to stop this. Alright guys, this is Craig Westbrook's video. Um, and this is going to blow your mind. You ready? Hello, I'm Craig Westbrook. Recently, a lot of people know, I went up and located the state of Myers Estate. And uh, through some efforts of the group we were with, we had every intention of purchasing it. But you know, as things go, this is some very interesting, very interesting technology. Stan Myers was very much ahead of his time, and it's tragic about what happened to him. The family that we dealt with, they had been holding on to the state for almost 12 years, and they're very good people. I have nothing but the most respect for them, and they, they've been taking care of everything for all this time. and. I can understand their situation and their, their position, but I was very, very much privileged to spend a little time with them, to hear their position, and then to get to go through some of Mr. Meyer's equipment. And that's something very few people will ever get to do. I'm one of the very few, and I'm absolutely privileged, and I want to thank the family involved. They've asked me not to mention their name, so I, I don't. But they know who they are, and they're very good people. And I'm going to bet they got every penny of what they were asking for for that car, and it was worth every penny because the technology represents something new. 
something good for everybody. Thank you very much. And let's take a look for a second. I'm going to talk about some things while we were there. Okay, guys. You ready for this? This is unbelievable. Here we go. We saw equipment, tech sheets, everything that just blows you away that was still intact. And a lot of people don't understand hydrogen can be in different states of matter. You've got solid liquid gas and then you've got plasma. Four states. And there's also something new that I haven't really told too many people about. There in they the are. Background. Check it out. You see these are what were known as polarized electric gas generators. They use a captured magnetic gas with a very tiny input of electrical energy to produce a massive amount of output electricity many, many times over unity. Not one to one, one to five, five to ten to one, maybe a hundred or two hundred to one, maybe a thousand to one. And that was some of the technology that was buried in this estate and nobody knew it was there. But we did. Thank you very much. I'm Craig Westbrook. You have a good day now. Thanks. Alright guys. Yeah. That's just backing up someone who personally touched this equipment and looked at it. Did they start one up? I don't know. I have not talked to him personally. Um, I don't know. But here's, here's the thing. This patent tells you everything you need to know. I truly believe that stand went a little bit crazy towards the end of his life. But... I think that was because he didn't understand what he had. He tried to explain something that he could not explain and he just, he just started to lose it. Or somebody was doing something else and giving someone some drugs. But nonetheless, before he started getting a little loopy, this patent was written. And this patent is so important. Okay. All right, let's go through this patent. One second. Okay, guys, so let's get started here. Um, I'm just blo I'm just blown away by what by what I'm discovering, and like I said, this this video is very important. Please upload this to your channel. Upload it a hundred times. I don't care. Upload it to other people's channel. Whatever you have to do, do it. Okay, uh, it says in the patent four six one three three zero four. Um, a hydrogen gas generator system for converting water into hydrogen and oxygen gases. Here's, here's where it's different. Um, I needed to tell you the dates. The first patent was made, or was dated 4 April. And the second patent, which is this one, was dated September 23rd, 86. Um... So basically, there's three years between those two. So I personally think in those three years, and I haven't looked at some of the other patents, he may have been playing with making hydroxy gas instead of using the other gas. Okay. Uh, let's get started. Okay. The hydrogen gas system for converting water into hydrogen and oxygen gases. Um, I'm going to show you this picture again. All right. That's what it looks like. Alright, that's the one with the pump. And here's a short version. Alright, of the one with the electromagnetic particle accelerator. Okay. In combination with a magnetic particle accelerator for a voltage current electrical potential generation. Okay, right there it says a voltage slash current electrical potential generation. He's generating electricity with this. That's a key there. I personally think that this is what's running his car. And um, who cares about efficiency if you're creating your own power? Think about it. I don't know. Just a thought. Uh, let's see here. It says, The hydrogen gas generator composes an array of plates emerged in a housing and having natural water pass through... Uh, they're through, out, I don't know. Uh, and then, basically, it says plates, so he's not using the fuel uh, cell capacitor, or, or the, you know, the water cell capacitor that you normally would see. So this is before the fuel water cell, the water fuel cell, sorry. Uh, direct current, voltage dependent, current limited. Direct current, 
not pulsed. That's what it says. Voltage dependent slash current limited. Uh, so he's limiting the current. The amplification of the voltage might be tremendous. I don't know. Um, if you look at the, on the, here, let me just show you. All right, guys, so I've got this pulled up one more time, and here's what I want to show you on this. This looks like incoming power here. And it looks as if this is a power transformer, so it's just plugged directly into a wall. Uh, and that runs the pump. There is nothing else on this at all. You put in the particles, they're constantly always in there on this system with the pump, and you're constantly outputting voltage. <laughs> okay? Like, there's nothing else there at all. Input transformer, output toroidal core with gas flowing through it, and all these are coils. Alright? Alright. Let's keep going here. Sorry, it's taking forever, but. Terribly important. The hydrogen gas, okay, uh, sorry, the, all right, current limited. Potential applied to the plates causes the hydrogen slash ga uh, oxygen gas to dislocate from the water molecule. Standard electrolysis is what it sounds like. The upper portion of the container is hydro uh, hydro hydrogen and oxygen mixture collection chamber for maintaining permanent gas pressure. That's another key thing I'm finding in this patent. Permanent gas pressure, it has to be pressurized gas can't just be like air. It has to be pressurized gas. Uh, and it's, uh, we'll keep going, but it says it in here a lot. Uh, all right. Then it says, there is introduced into the hydrogen oxygen collection chamber from a source, a substantial qu quantity of permanent magnetic or mag excuse me permanent magnetically polarized particles so the particles from a source okay are being put in with the hydrogen and oxygen all right and then it says uh, attached to the gas collection chamber outlet is a non-magnetic non-conductive closed loop of tubing right there it means uh, in this other patent, we weren't for sure if it stated aluminum, copper, we don't know. But in here it says non-magnetic, non-conductive. That means not copper, not aluminum, maybe not stainless steel either. Uh, non-conductive. Plastic is the only thing I can think of. This patent was in 86. I don't know what kind of materials they had at that time, okay? Um, I just don't know. Alright, let's keep going. Uh, the polarized magnetic particles are caused to circulate in the closed loop tubing by an electrical or mechanical pump. A pickup coil wound around the tubing, a pickup coil wound around the tubing, will have a voltage induced therein as the magnetic field of the polarized magnetic gas particles pass through. Okay, here's the important part. The induced voltage has utilization as an electrical power source. All right. In that, the hydro uh, hydrogen slash oxygen gases are not polarized. That's what it says. So basically, the hydrogen and oxygen are not the polarized material. And then it keeps saying, the gases will seek a pressure release vent via an outlet. The hydrogen and oxygen gases may be utilized such as in a burner system. Hello, run your car, run your house, heat heat your house. That's what, and, and have extra electrical output. Come on, guys. This is crazy. I, mean, I believe it. Um, this is what we're going to be testing. And you guys need to start, excuse me, testing and building this stuff. I'll read that again. The induced voltage has utilization of an electrical power source in that the hydrogen slash oxygen gases are not polarized. The gases will seek a pressure release vent. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Pressure rele release via an outlet. 
the hydrogen gases may be utilized such as in a burner system. Okay, now, um, all right, let's keep going. I'm going to explain this real quick to you so we know what we're talking about. You got the plates here. You got an input voltage here. Uh, there you go. All right, and you've got a pressure switch here to tell you how much pressure is in this chamber. And then that comes out of the pressure switch and goes to the, the plates. This is just standard electrolysis. All right. And you're producing hydrogen and oxygen gases. And they run through the, the pipe being pushed by a fan. All right. Now, this does not show the, the magnets across it, which is another key thing in this, I believe, is that you have to have that, um, that magnet across here. Okay. And it's not shown in this patent. And the gas burners here with a valve and the control system for the valve and it also running the fan. And the particles come back in here. Now here's here's a thing that gets me. We don't know what this is. Uh, this is just... I'll get through the patent I'll show you. But this is a chamber. And this could be the plasma arc chamber. Now that I think about it. Alright. And it's also inducing gases in here. These are the magnetized particles and these are not. The ones coming out of the electrolysis process. That's what I'm gathering. Uh, I need your opinion on that. I don't really know. Uh, and then the other one. Same. Okay. Hope you guys are getting good information out of this. Hope I'm clear. I'm just going to read through some of the stuff I highlighted. The upper portion of the container is a hydrogen slash oxygen storage chamber for managing the predetermined uh, maintain, uh, sorry, predetermined level of pressure. The upper portion of the container is a hydrogen oxygen storage chamber for maintaining a predetermined level of pressure. It's under pressure at all times. It's being maintained by that pressure switch. Okay, there is an introduced, oh, there is introduced into the hydrogen oxygen collection chamber from a source, a source, we don't know what that is, a substantial quantity of permanently magnetically polarized particles. The particles dismerged in the collection chamber will superimpose themselves on a generated on the generated hydrogen oxygen gases. They will superimpose themselves. All right onto the hydrogen and oxygen gases. Um, later in here it talks about nitrogen. <laughs> okay, I believe that's the other key, nitrogen. Uh, I believe nitrogen is actually the other, is the magnetized particles. Okay, and then it later says, non-conductive, uh, non-magnetic, non-conductive closed loop of tubing. There again it says non-conductive. It's gotta be a plastic of some sort. Uh, let's see, down further, uh, it says again, the power induced voltage, the utilization as electrical output source, in that the hydrogen slash oxygen gases are not polarized. The gases will seek a pressure release, a re uh, rele release via a outlet. So the hydrogen and oxygen gases are not the, the particles that are magnetized, they're just in there. So I, theoretically you could do without but I believe this is the key to where Stan started on his car because he wanted a gas he could burn and electrical output I mean come on and it says it's superimposing on the hydrogen and oxygen gases that has something to do with it too uh, you guys have to help me out on that alright let's keep going if you guys haven't seen the the uh, home heating system it says here the hydrogen and oxygen may be utilized in uh, utilized such in a burner system he had made a home heat system, which is actually at the beginning of this video. I can show you that real quick. That's it. Hello everybody, this is Don O'Don at the uh, Stan Myers Estate uh, to give you a quick view of some of the things that's uh, available in this. This here is the original home heating unit. A home heating unit? Hmm, self-sustaining? I don't know. Alright, that's that's where he went, I believe, with this. And then he moved to his car. Alright, let's keep going. Alright. A variable source voltage having a circuitry to restrict the amperage. 
All right, let's just part in here. Restrict the amperage. Comprise a, uh, additionally a pair of terminals connected to a positive and negative voltage to the alternating plates in the pair. Pair. Okay. Pair. So was there only two plates? I don't know. It sounds like it. All right, uh, and let's keep going. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. This, I think, is a key as well. The released hydrogen gas dissipated it as particles, and oxygen gas particles are collected in the storage in the chamber together with other released gases such as nitrogen. Uh, the nitrogen could have been in the water uh, as it's in the air and everywhere else. So you have nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Are any of those magnetizable and permanently magnetizable? I don't know. Something you guys need to figure out and help me out with. The number and size of turns related to the tubing configuration of voltage current output is set forth by a co by my co-pending application. So in the other patent, it talks about that. That's what it's saying, basically. Keep going here. Uh, as set forth in the storage chamber is a maintained at a predetermined pressure. Once the pressure is at turn uh, is at once the pressure is at attained, the hydrogen and oxygen gases will be expelled into the outlet line with a substantial velocity. So you're building up pressure and then releasing it. So I believe there might be a valve in the system between the where the hydrogen and oxygen are and the outlet. That's kind of what it says there. Okay, upon ignition the hydrogen slash oxygen gases will have the particles uh, have the particles superimposed there will be separated and pressure released via the tubing. So the hydrogen and oxygen gases have the particles superimposed Therein will separate. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going. The motion, the motion of the polarized particles through the closed loop will be greater than the gas mixture pressure released. So that means the pressure in the closed loop system is higher than what's being released out. Uh, that is the valve 37 open and hydrogen oxygen gases will separate themselves from the polarized particles. Okay, so it says when you burn the hydrogen and oxygen, basically, the gases will separate themselves from the polarized particles. So whatever the polarized particles are, are not necessarily being released, they're being contained. I don't know how that works either. Okay, again here it says the pressure gauge achieves a predetermined level. What is that level? What PSI is that level? That's something we need to find out. Okay, also this permits the entry into the chamber as so a subsequential amount of permanently polarized magnetic particles. Polarized particles upon entry into the chamber superimpose themselves on the hydrogen and oxygen gas. Uh, in this diagram, that's another thing I don't know what this is. We don't know what this is. Out of there comes magnetized particles, ma uh, permanently magnetized particles. Like I showed earlier in this other patent, it could be something that looks like this. Now here's my guess. Later he comes up with this steam resonator. Um, and basically it's a superheated heated steam is what it is. Uh, and is that what that is? I don't know. That's something I need your all's help with. I really do. We gotta figure this out. Um, okay, where was I? It is to be appreciated that the minuscule amount of polarized particles will be carried into the outlet as well as hydrogen and oxygen gases continuing to circulate through the closed loop. In the event the amount of polarized particles uh, expanded should become expended should become significant, the quantity of particles will be replenished from from source replenished from source. We don't know what that is. So if you do a closed loop system, you could you basically don't have to put anything into it just the electrical signal coming in accelerates the particles out comes the electricity from the pickup coils but if you're using it to burn the hydrogen and oxygen gas then you'll need then you'll need it so it's, theoretically it's a self-sustaining unit that you can utilize to 
uh, also use the hydrogen and oxygen to burn something. This is just some important information, guys, that you, you need to read this patent for yourself. With hydrogen and oxygen gases, make sure to predetermine circuit uh, consequence. The polarized particles will not be separated from the hydrogen and oxygen gases at the outlet. Uh, okay, the mag magnetized particle source, 32. All right, the ma okay, that's what it says. This is what we need to figure out what this is. Uh, in this diagram again, here is 32. That's where the magnetized particles are coming from. Not not the not the hydroxy, but here. Okay, the magnetized particles particle source. 32, which is that box I showed you, is operative to transform a material. A material. Um, could be a solid. Could be a liquid. It doesn't say. To transform a material into, into minute vapor particles that are capable of being permanently polarized magnetically, the vapor in the nature of the gas will superimpose on the hydrogen and oxygen gases. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, nitrogen will do that. Okay. I don't know. I, I need your help. I'm not a physic physics person here. I wish I could I wish I knew that stuff, but I don't. I need your help. Please let me know. If you have any ideas on this stuff, please let me know. Okay. Okay. It is to be recalled. Polarized particles have placed they're on a magnetic field potential, hence the mag magnetized particles approach the accelerator. They are attracted as they pass the center of the accelerator and they are propelled through. States in the earlier patents a little more clear than that. Basically it's pulled into the magnetic coil and pushed out the other side because they're polarized magnetic particles. So it'd just be like a magnet in a coil. It'd be sucked into the coil, but it'd also be repelled at the same time. That's what's interesting. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Let me keep looking here. Okay, guys. Again, uh, it says in the patent a little bit later. Again, the voltage is current limited, uh, which I believe is part of the choke in the VIC circuit. What the choke does is resonate, but it also limits the current. I think. Somebody else can correct me. Restrictive the amperage, okay, restrict the amperage to neg negligible value related to the said voltage. So the amperage is way down and the voltage does not say it could be way high. That's what the VIC circuit does, by the way. Um, let's keep going. <laughs> Again, I told you this earlier, but it says in a self sustaining embodiment, of the gas electrical generator, a portion of the output at the voltage taps of the pickup coils is directed, oh there it says pickup coils, which means that all those coils are around there, is directed back to the power supply in that the total power requested to be applied to the plates is relatively low. That says right there what it is. This is crazy. An insignificant portion of the output at taps 7072, the output coil, is required for sustained operation of the generator. There's some deep words right there. Basically, this is a self-sustaining system. It's unbelievable. A little bit later it says, the electrical particle portion of the electrical gas generator of the present invention is operative continuously as set forth from above. Hence, the output voltage at TEP 7072 would be available to, to the power supply whenever the demand for the gas generation is made. Uh, it also does say in this patent that the gases are constantly moving through there even if you're not producing, sorry, even if you're not burning the flame, you still have to run the pump or the electrical accelerator so that you constantly create voltage. Uh, once the system stops, you have to restart it somehow. Okay, that's what it's basically saying. Be right back. A source of permanently magnetizable polarized particles connected to a sad inlet, wherein a sad particle, upon entering sad inlet to sad chamber, becomes superimposed on hydrogen and oxygen gases 
if you guys know what kind of particles can be superimposed on the hydrogen and oxygen, please let me know. I'm not a physics person. I wish I knew that stuff. Uh, I just don't. I wish I do. So those of you that do, you better let me know. Um, all right, let's see. Again, it just says superimposing particles, predetermined pressure again. How many PSI is that? We don't know. Okay, we're in said electrical means as an alter, uh, alternative voltage output, wherein said means for varying the acceleration of said polarized particles comprised of varying the frequency of said alternating input voltage. Um, it states here also about the AC-DC and the waveforms. Any type of the waveforms you put into it, it's going to give you relatively the, the same uh, output voltage, or I mean waveform. So what's interesting about that is that you could put AC a signal into it and you're going to get an AC signal out of it even though in that system it would seem like the particles are moving one way through that tube, but really they'd be oscillating. So uh, that's just something we need to play with. Okay, it's uh, again down here at the bottom it says a variable voltage source having circuit means for restricting current. Okay, that's the end of the patent. Um, I don't know what else to say, guys. This is just some serious business. This video needs to be posted everywhere you can possibly get it. I really think this is very important information, and I have never seen this patent. If you have seen this patent, let me know. I'm curious. Information uh, for me is in the beginning of this video. Um, I don't really have any more notes here. I will show you what I've done. Might as well put that on the end of this video. It's already super long. I don't even know how long this video is. It's crazy. And I'll show you what I've done here. Okay. Here's what I'm going to be trying. I've got some tubing here. I've got some uh, solenoid valves. And I'm going to be making me a single loop toroidal transformer gas core just like this all right that's what I'm going to be doing and the gases will come in here and exit here okay and I'm going to put two coils on here of the exact same dimensions and I'm going to put an input input and I want to see what the output does um, now theoretically you could have one little input coil and this whole entire thing would be output coils everywhere else but I want a one to one and I want to see what the input versus the output is then I can continuously add coils on there like I showed you in the diagrams on the uh, the videos. Um, here's my little uh, rustic spiral cell I made. I bent the ends down and I finished the ends on the bottom a little different. I'm going to put this in a tube um, and close it, cap it off and see what we get as far as that's going to be my hydrogen producer. And I guess I need to look I need to look into more to more of what's going on with this uh, this part here, this is where I need your guys' help. I'm still learning. What is this? This is where the magnetized particles come from. The only thing I can see from three years prior that is in a patent would be this. Okay. Um, I don't know, I guess I just need to... I need you guys to help me out here. That's what I need you for, but... I'm done. I'm done talking. Um... I'm not, I'm not going to bore you guys anymore, and you probably weren't bored, but uh, I don't know what else to say. Go figure this stuff out. I really think that this is the beginning of what Stan's doing in his later work. Um, here I have the, right here, steam resonator. That's in, his, in, in his, all of his new stuff, but it's not really in the diagrams. The VIC matrix, <laughs> okay, there's another patent that you should probably definitely have. I've highlighted some interesting things in it, but I'm not going to go through it. But, get this, here's my, here's my take on this. This, you've all seen this, got the pated, the, I'm um, sorry, the gated pulse signal to a transformer. Now on most of the diagrams most of you have seen, it, a lot of this information is missing. Check it out. I've got a diode number here. 
Let me start over. I'm going to give you the patent number. There's the patent number. 4936961. Uh, the patent is titled A uh, method for for the production of a fuel, a gas fuel. Uh, method for the production of a fuel gas. All right. And again, look at there, toroidal core. Um, personally, I do not think I do not think that that is a gas core transformer. I personally think that this whole entire system is being ran off the gas core transformer. That's my personal opinion on that. I, I don't know. But it seems that, like Alex Petty, I believe at the moment, thinks that that's how it is. I'm not for sure if that's how he thinks or not. Uh, I did want to show you one more thing. And the reason that I want to show you this... Uh, hold on. All right, guys, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but that is the steam resonator and the BIC circuit. Um, I don't see anywhere here where this would be a gas core transformer. So my, my take on that is that it's not a gas core transformer. And there's a few places where it says it's a steel, comprised of steel. Uh, and it says that in one of the, I believe it's in this patent. But it's comprised of steel. Alright, but here it says the core. Okay. I'm going to let you read through this patent yourself. There's the blocking diode number. Now, so there has been talk about this patent I saw online, but I haven't seen anybody talk about that other patent. Gives you the number of windings. Alright, but uh, yeah, that's my take on that. My take is that <laughs> basically this and these, these things are the key. They run the whole system. That's my opinion. I really don't know. Alright, I'm done. I'm done talking. I don't, really don't know how long this video is. Probably 50 minutes an hour. I'm going to leave you guys alone. I need you to do me a favor and upload this video everywhere you can. I need you to post it as many times as you want to on other people's channels. Hack people's channels and post I don't care what you do. Just get this video out there. This is important information. I feel that it needs to be widely spread as fast as possible. Okay, I'm out. Make sure you download this video. I put everything you guys need to know in the description of this video. Links, um, a link to this video you can permanently download it do it right away do it right away before you start this video I guess it's too late now if you watch it this far um, I'll give you links to Alex Petty's log um, and any other information I think is important I will continuously update this data in the description if you repost this video please attach the information within the description please do that I'm out this Russ see ya